Folks, this is Zard Wolf. Welcome to episode 11 of our game of Win Eagles Fight, the Eastern Front of World War I. We will see if the Germans can wrap this up this turn. So uh, looking carefully this time at the expanded sequence of play, um, let us uh, go to the random events phase. Once again, we are still rolling on the first column. Let's see what we get. That is a 4. Um, that is an event F. We haven't actually gotten that before. Russians suffer a defeat in the Caucasus. Treat this as no event if rolled after event G, which hasn't happy, happened yet. Um, if event G has not already been rolled, withdraw any one Russian infantry corps. Oh, wow. This unit returns as part of forces released if event G is rolled later. Wow. So that's, that is not good news for the Russians. Uh, let's take a look at where we're going to do that. The Russian situation facing Austria-Hungary is not good, but it's a lot better than the way they're doing against the Germans up there. So we're going to remove this half-strength infantry corps. The Russians actually still occupy that victory city, which is nice, uh, but it doesn't help them a whole lot. So let's, uh, let's move on to new units and withdrawals. Tragically, the Russians receive no reinforcements this turn, but they do have seven replacements, which is the highest they've had in quite a while. So they're going to buy seven of these 564 uh, infantry corps. Well, let's see where we're going to place them. Their options are not awesome. We'll first of all place one in Riga because it seems pretty obvious that uh, the Germans are going to hit there. Uh, we'll place one in Talinin and we'll place one in, Saint, in Petrograd. It's not St. Petersburg to the Russians at this time. And then let's move the camera a little bit to show you where the other ones are going. So we're going to try to deny the Germans the two cities of Smolensk and Gomel. Um, so we're just going to keep these here. Um, that's pretty much all the Russians can do. Even strategic movement-wise, they, they really have relatively few options. You know what? Let's take that unit that we put in Petrograd, put it in Smolensk, and the unit that we put in Talinin, and put it in Gomel, because uh, the Germans just can't get to either of those places at least this turn. So let's see what happens. Having lost anything in ages, the Austrians have two replacements, um, and they can only spend one on this 343 infantry, so we'll put that in Budapest. And the Germans get two replacements as well, and we know that they can use them. So we're going to flip these two units and be satisfied with that. So... And there's no mandatory, once again, there's no mandatory withdrawals. So that is the Central Powers replacements. Let's go to strategic movement. So there's really nothing strategic movement-wise that the Russians can or would elect to do. The Germans do have a couple things. They've got this guy down here in uh, Pinsk. Uh, they're going to rail him up here. Nope, they can't do that. They're going to rail him up here to Svali. And they're going to be able to uh, to do something in Minsk. We have Oberost available to us this turn as well. Um, as far as additional German strategic movement, I don't believe anybody up here is on a, even a rail line. No, that's absolutely accurate. This guy, these guys are. Mm, that's a good question. Do I want to move them over by Spali? I'd be giving up an attack on Smolensk. Let's look and see what we can do here. So, this guy could move. One, two, three. These guys can move. You can get an encirclement on here. There's no fortress. So, I think I'm going to have a better attack against Smolensk. We've still got this straggler here. Was this guy even in supply? Yes, he was. So he's actually fine. So somebody's got to do something about him. So I think we're not going to do that. I think we're going to continue what encirclement we have of Riga uh, with the forces we have available. And uh, we will be satisfied with that. Uh, Austria can actually move that unit from uh, Budapest to Gorlish. And it will. Um, so do the Germans want to try and rail some of these guys that are currently in Austria up? 
I would be inclined to say no. Maybe they do. These guys over here, they're off map. No, I'd be abandoning Limburg, which was kind of a linchpin of the whole strategy. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with that and call that uh, the uh, Central Powers strategic movement phase. Let's go to the Russian player turn and see what they're gonna do. All right, so let's pull the ammo shortage markers off, whilst not forgetting about them. But we have, we can move this guy one, two. Well, there's very little that can be done with these guys. One, two, three, four to the Nieper. I guess I can't do anything better with him. This guy will move one, two, three, four to block for Gomel. This guy will move two here. This guy will move two here. That places them in supply as things currently stand. We'll actually go back up just one hex there. Let's look at uh, their, uh, their guys down against Austria-Hungary. The Russians can't really consolidate this line very much. Let's pull Stavka out while we're at it. Um, but what they can do... So I see an opportunity for the Germans here. The Germans, all they need to do is go 1, 2 to block that line. So 1, 2, 3, 4 blocks that line. So the Russians need to go 1, 2, 3... One, two, two. Let's move these guys up to provide a better line there. Then these guys can go. Let's check terrain. Everything's open. So these guys can go one, two, three here. And that gives us at least some ability to not have all these guys cut off. Uh, that's not very good, but it's what we have. And we can actually, looking at what's here, that's a town, and that's the supply hub. So I don't really care about this too much in Dubno. So we'll, we'll keep that where it's at. That is Russian movement. The question is, do the Russians have any attacks to do? And I think they're going to try and t uh, hit Lemberg again. That's ten factors. Let's roll for Russian uh, ammunition shortage first. We're on turn 11, so they're going to have fewer ammunition shortage problems than they had in the past. On the other hand, I've consistently rolled sixes on the fives and sixes on this. There's only four this time. And the Russians will place two, the Germans will place two. So let's see where the Russians are going to put theirs. So these two guys up here are basically speed bumps anyway. So the Russians will hit those right there. And then the Germans will drop two. We can't place them in Riga, so they'll place two in Smolensk. Those are all five, six, four, so that's going to reduce uh, Smolensk considerably. Uh, and, I mean, we're really not going to be able to hit Gomel this turn, so it's kind of a moot point. Um, and all my uh, big artillery is out of commission, not out of commission, but uh, not available this turn. I'd have to... Uh, the, uh, the rest of the, the army has kind of outrun it. So there's not much we can do with that. So the one Russian attack that we have is going to be against Lemberg. Let's look at that. So we have, once again, we have 10 factors in defense here. And I'm thinking we have 5, 5, and 5. 5 and 5, that's 25. And we have 11, that's 36 versus 10. That's a 3 to 1. Down 1 for the city. So three to one down one is an attack I'm willing to make. That's a three on the three to one. That's a one to one exchange. So the Germans will lose one of these two. This is a one step unit. Uh, and the Russians will reduce this guy to its reduced strength side. Uh, that was a total failure. That is the entire Russian player turn. Uh, let's check. Let's check for attrition. Everybody should be okay up here. Everybody should be okay up here. So attrition is good. So that's the entire Russian player turn. Now, believe it or not, Austria-Hungary might actually do something this turn. This unit will move one, two. This unit will move one, two, three. One, two, three. 
these guys will move one, two, three. One, two, three. The Germans and the Austro-Hungarians cannot coordinate unless they are stacked together, which I might try to orchestrate. So let's try that. Actually, one, two, three, four. I'm going to have to check that before we make the attack. These guys will go one, two, three. One, two, three. Three. One, two, three. One, two. Three, one, one, two. It's fairly dangerous for Austria-Hungary, actually, but we're going to hit this stack. I need to make sure that we can actually stack two Germans with one Austrian. I believe that's, I believe that is fine, but I'm going to verify it before I make the attack. In the meantime, though, let's see what the Germans are doing up north. So the German attack on Riga. We're going to move these guys. Let's see here for two. These guys will go. Make sure they. Uh, that's only one guy. One, two, three. That's that. <coughs> and these guys can move one, two, three, four. So I don't see any way to get them in there. And I really don't want to get this cavalry in there. However, what I can do here is go one, two, one, two, three, four. We'll move the cavalry one, two, three to Pskov. That controls that while they're there. And these guys will go one, two, three, four. Let's put uh, put this down there. And they're in the supply where they're at at the moment. Um, let's look at the line approaching Gomel and Smolensk. So looking at what we have here, these guys are going to move. He uh, let's see. Let's do these one at a time. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's not a forest. These guys will go, let's see, one, two, three. Let's get some German markers because that's important. So that's going to be concentric. And here we're going to have one, two, three, four. I'm going to move the uh, artillery up. One, two, three to there. These guys will move up one, two. These guys will move up one, two. And that's four a piece, but you know where I was going with that. Now these guys are stuck in this friggin' swamp. Um, so we're going to take the artillery, move them one, two, three back to Minsk. That way we can actually rail them up to the front if we actually get another game turn. Now the rest of these guys will go one, two, three, four, 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 two, four, two, four, two, four. So, looking at these, we could, one, two, three, four, we could hit those, these were here, one, two, three, four, we could hit those two, and that would be a one-to-one, -one. but we'll, we'll do these. These guys stay in supply here, and on this stack, we'll have a pretty good odds attack. And that appears to be the extent of what we're doing for strategic movement. So, with that in mind, or with regular movement, I should say, with that in mind, let us place Oberost. So I think where we're going to put Oberost is actually right here, because that could give us a second attack down here. This is not good use of Oberost, actually. These guys are too spread out. The range is two hexes, so I could pick it up here, but this guy's getting nobody to attack. So, and I don't get a second movement. Um, so I'm going to have to be happy with that, actually. So that's that. Let's go back down to Austria-Hungary and see what those guys are doing. So here's the limit on cooperation between the Austria-Hungarians and the Germans. Uh, in 1914, only one German stack can be stacked with Austrians. 
uh, after that up to three can be. So we have two units stacked here. And they can only coordinate if they are uh, stacked together. So we can coordinate this attack. Now I don't think either of these are active cores. One of them actually, nope, neither of them are. All right, so what we have here is, maybe I should have uh, hit that actually. So what we have here is a massive concentric assault on this hex. So we have 12 factors in defense, but we have 4, 9, 14, 18, 3 here for 21, 24, plus 12 is 36, plus 10 is 46, plus 6 is 52. We have 52 to 12. That is so complicated. That is a 4 to 1. 4 to 1, plus 2 for concentric assault. Those are really shitty odds for uh, for an assault of, of this type. Uh, but obviously we're going to roll it. So let's roll it up. Let's try and get there where we can see it. Four to one up two, that's a seven on the four to one. That's a breakthrough and an extermination or elimination. So these guys go away and everybody can basically break through here. Although we're not really gonna do that. Um, these guys will break through here, we'll break through here. That puts three there. Uh, that's basically all we're gonna do with that. Um, uh, actually, no, that's not what we're going to do with that. This stack will advance. That makes more sense. And is there really a breakthrough we can do? Yeah, there is. We could go one, two, three to beef that up. And we could go one. Uh, no, not really. That's about all we can do. All right, well, that, that uh, puts a better spin on the next... Oh, uh, yeah, actually, hold on a second. Um, so that's one... Oh, let's take the 674. So that's one, two, and Lemberg. That beefs Lemberg up as well. And actually, there's no reason not to put that there as well. They were all involved in the attack. So our odds for the attack on Smolensk are two to one. It's a Russian city. There's a German active core, so we are at a total of down two. So let's see what we get. That is a six, and we got a four on the two to one. That's an exchange of one to one. So we'll lose a unit there, and we'll lose a step off the German unit. And we don't, Oberos does not apply to this particular combat. So looking at this stack over here, we have three versus eleven. Uh, 16, 3 to 16, that's a 5 to 1, plus 1 for the German active core, but minus 1 for the Marsh. So let's see what we can do here. That is a 6, even up on the, what did we say, 3, well, that's 5 to 1, three to, uh, 3 to 16 is 5 to 1, that's a 6, that's a breakthrough and an elimination. So we'll get rid of them. Move these guys up one, two, three to there. That is actually the entire regular Central Powers phase, combat phase. So we're going to do our Oberost attack here, and it's going to basically be the same attack. Uh, five to one, that's got ammo shortage, so it's only three factors. Five to one, even up. That's a 5. On a 5 to 1 is a 0 and an elimination. But we can advance after combat and we will do so. And we'll actually move here. Move everybody into that hex. Because they're in supply where they're at. So that is the Central Powers combat phase. Attrition should be fine. Let's check for victory. Russia's revolution number this turn is 11, which means that we need to roll a 6 on this die to see if the Tsar falls. Let's see what happens. That's a 6. So to that number, we are adding uh, 
one for every city. There's some event modifiers as well, but none of those have actually come up. So we're adding one for Warsaw, one for Lodz, one for Kovno, one for Vilna, and one for Minsk. That is five. We didn't take Smolensk or Riga, but that is five. Uh, the Tsar has been overthrown, and the game is over on the East Front. So uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this series. Um, I will do a short video uh, in the next couple of days talking about what I'm going to try next. Uh, certainly on the table will be Glory's End, the other half of this particular dual pack. So uh, feel free to like the video. Leave me some comments in the notes below. I know I've messed up a ton of rules, uh, but I feel a lot more competent at this game now, having seen it play out, than uh, I did when I started, that's for sure. So, uh, like I said, hopefully you've enjoyed it, and uh, check out uh, whatever the next uh, video playthrough series is going to be.